Hello, and welcome to the Tech Theater Skills series. My name is Chris Schlemp. I've been an actor, director, projections designer, and theater teacher for over 20 years. And I'm glad to be sharing some of my knowledge with you. This series is on lighting design, and it's geared for someone who is just beginning their adventures of discovery in terms of lighting in the theater. The series is going to be broken down into seven parts. And this is episode seven, the final one in this series, Parts of a Light Plot. There's some pretty hefty vocabulary coming your way right about now, including some more in-depth explanation. So I recommend you get out a pen and paper. If you start making that connection between your brain, your eye, and your hand, you're more likely to learn. If you have ever seen a blueprint for a building, then you already know what a light plot looks like. Basically, a light plot is a set of instructions for hanging and focusing the lighting for a show. When we say hang, we don't mean relaxing with friends. What we mean is putting each light in its assigned position with its gel and gobo, if those are needed. When we say focus, we mean pointing the light on its designated lighting zone with hard or soft edges as needed. If you are ever working on a show and you see that a day has been set aside for a hang and focus then that's exactly what you will be doing, hanging lights in their positions and focusing them on the places they are supposed to be lighting. Being able to read a light plot might seem like a very technical skill that the average tech or performer is never going to use, but you'd be surprised to discover that a light plot will usually be close at hand whenever the company is going into tech, the time period right before the opening of a show, when all the technical details get worked out and programmed. As a tech, the more you know, the more valuable you are to the team. A knowledgeable tech is a priceless asset to a crew and sought after by technical directors in every theater all over the world. If you can read a light plot, it means that you can work independently without waiting for approval or guidance from a supervisor, and that makes tech run smoothly and efficiently. And if you're an actor, then you should always know at least a little bit about what your techs are doing, if nothing else than to show respect for their knowledge and craft. A light plot shows a whole bunch of information, so it can feel overwhelming to look at initially, but it really becomes manageable once you recognize how it all ties together. A light plot shows the top view, looking straight down from above without perspective lines. It shows both the stage, where the actors perform, and the house, where the audience sits, because lighting instruments are hung above both places. Although it will not have many labels for the set, it will show the major set and scenery pieces just for orientation purposes. It also will indicate curtains and any other masking, as well as the walls and doors of the immediate theater itself. Horizontal lines will indicate the electrics, from which all the instruments are hung, and outline shapes of all the light types in their proper position will establish where lights are supposed to go. Overlapping circles and ellipses on the stage show the lighting zones, and labels will reveal which lights will illuminate which zones. There are also several boxes around the edge of a light plot that contain other important data. The title block contains the name of the director, the name of the designer, the title of the show, and the name of the theater or company, the date the plot was made, and a very critical piece of information the scale of the drawing. When we draw something to scale, we are changing its size proportionally, so we always need to know how much of a smaller measurement equals some measurement in reality. If we say that our scale, for example, is one quarter inch equals one foot, then that means that every inch on the page corresponds to four feet in the real world. A full-scale drawing would require a piece of paper the size of the whole theater, and that just isn't practical. So, we shrink it down to a more manageable size, like half-inch scale or quarter-inch scale, which is a very common scale in U.S. theaters, so that we can carry our light plot with us as we hang and focus our lights. Just like a map needs a key showing rivers and roads, a light plot also needs an instrument key, so that the lighting crew knows which type of instrument is supposed to go in each spot. Based on previous lessons, you should recognize some of the lights on this example. An instrument key will also have a spot to point out what all the numbers on each light mean. 
Some common pieces of data to include here are the lighting zone that the light focuses on, the color of its gel, whether or not it has a gobo, what its instrument number is, what dimmer it's on, what channel it's on, and other information such as perhaps how many watts its lamp requires. And again, from a prior lesson, you should remember how important knowing the wattage is. Now you know where to find that number on the light plot. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, or if you happen to be in my class, drop them in the chat. Let's see if we can figure out the answer together. There is a dotted vertical line on the light plot that divides the stage into left and right. This is known as the center line, or CL. There is also a dotted line that cuts across the area where the main curtain closes. This is known as the plaster line, or proscenium line, because it is on the proscenium. The pipes that hang above the stage and the house are known as battens, and they are indicated by horizontal lines on the light plot. When the battens have power, which all lights require, then they are called electric battens, or simply electrics for short. Electrics get numbered from the plaster line heading up stage, electric 1, electric 2, electric 3, and so forth. Electrics above the house are often referred to as front of house electrics, or FOH, and are numbered from the plaster line to the back of the house, FOH1, FOH2, FOH3, and so forth. Light plots also often show circular or elliptical areas on stage that are called lighting zones or focus areas. They have letters or numbers or Roman numerals to distinguish one zone from another, and the zones overlap slightly so that when combined with all the other zones, they cover the whole stage in a nice wash. Each zone will have a certain number of lights that focus on it, depending on what the show needs. Every show is unique, so there is no one-size-fits-all method of lighting a stage. However, there is a technique that is a common enough starting place that is good enough for everyone who is working in the theater to know. It is called the McCandless Method, and it is named after its inventor, Dr. Stanley McCandless, the man who is considered the father of modern lighting design. You actually know how this method works already if you recall the lesson on warm and cool lighting. Now you just need to put it on the light plot. Every zone gets a warm light and a cool light, usually an ellipsoidal, hung on a front of house electric, pointing down at the stage at a 45 degree angle and 45 degrees from the side. Then each zone also gets a softer edged light hung above and slightly upstage of each zone to provide a nice backlight, which separates the actor from the background a little. Now just repeat that setup for each zone. As you can see in this diagram, we have three zones, A, B, and C. And each one has a warm, W, a cool, C, and a Fresnel, F. And there you go, the McCandless method, which is a great starting place for any design. Okay, for your final try it out of the series, turn to a blank page in your notes. As I name each part, see if you can draw it. Pause the video in between each item to see if you can remember what it looks like. We're not going for perfection here, just a basic sense is good enough. Okay, here we go. Draw a rectangle for the stage and another one for the house. Draw a dotted line for the center line and the plaster line. Draw two electrics above the stage and label them. Draw two front of house electrics and label them. Make six lighting zones on the stage making sure that they overlap each other. Label them. For each zone, you are going to add a warm light and a cool light and one Fresnel. Pick an outline shape that is roughly the shape of the instrument. Label each light with two pieces of info, whether it is warm or cool, and what zone it is focused on. Make a quick instrument key. Make a title block and put your name in it. All right, how'd you do? You learned a lot today. You learned what a light plot is. You learned why it is important to know a little bit about this aspect of lighting. And you learned the basics of how to actually read a light plot. 
I want to extend a special thank you to Mick Alderson of IATSE Local 470 in Appleton, Wisconsin, who provided an excellent resource for the preparation of this lesson. I have included a link to Mick's article in the description. Also, I want to thank my friend Eddie Hansen, the technical director at Spreckles Performing Arts Center in Rohnert Park, California, who once again helped me decide what was really important for beginners to know. Thank you both so much for your help. And thank you for joining me on this series. I hope you feel like it was worth your time. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Know that I plan on continuing the Tech Theater Skills series in the near future, so be on the lookout for the next one. Until that time, take care and see you in the future.